this, this is along the lines of uh, when Muslims adopt pagan practices and pagan rituals and bow down to a pagan temple and, and pagan idols, all the while they're condemning everyone else for, for, for idolatry. And Muhammad came, of course, to get rid of all this idolatry, and yet he encouraged it and made it part of his religion. But think, Muslims condemn us for believing that Jesus is Lord when that's the claim Jesus made about himself, that he is the divine and eternal son who entered creation to save us. But Muslims, Muslims tell us, oh, that's idolatry, that's paganism. And then we turn to their view of Muhammad, and is he just merely a man, just like every, any other man who happened to be chosen by God as a prophet? Yes, very good, but nevertheless, clearly, clearly just a man. Yep. Uh, in fact, we need to further add that Jesus at least claimed to be God in the flesh. And so when we worship him, when we pray to him, when we invoke him, and when we depend upon him for salvation, it's because we're not depending on a mere creature, but God, the eternal son, the divine son, who became flesh. Muslims will deny that Muhammad is a divinity. And yet, Islam is dependent. Salvation in Islam is dependent on not just confessing and testifying that Allah is God, but that Muhammad is his messenger. And also submitting fully, not just to Allah, but to Muhammad as well. You cannot be a Muslim, and therefore you cannot be saved, if you do not verbally confess that Allah is God, there is no deity but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger, and you cannot be saved, and you cannot be pardoned, unless you submit to Muhammad fully, submit to Muhammad equally as you do to Allah. Now where am I getting this from? Again, let me just read two verses real quickly, and then show you that Muslims daily pray to Muhammad, that they direct a portion of their prayers to Muhammad every day, even though he's been dead for about 1400 years. Let's look at chapter 4, verse 64 to 65 of the Quran. Let's see what it says about Salvation, forgiveness of sins, and Islam being dependent on fully surrendering to Muhammad and coming to him. Chapter 4, verses 64 to 65. We sent no messenger but to be obeyed by Allah's leave. If they, the hypocrites, when they had been unjust to themselves, had come to you, Muhammad, had they come to you and begged Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger had begged forgiveness for them, indeed they would have found Allah all forgiving. Now notice that, David. You can't just go to Allah to be forgiven. You have to come to Muhammad, and Muhammad has to pray and ask Allah to forgive you in order to be forgiven. That's 464. Now notice what 65 says. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith. You can't be a true Muslim, a true believer, until they make you, Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, but accept them with full submission. Now Islam means to submit. Here we're told, you don't just fully submit to Allah, but to Muhammad and to every one of his desires and whims. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like Islam is the religion of submitting to Allah alone? No, and that, that's something we, we, we continue to point out, that when, when Muslims appeal to, uh, uh, to potential converts here in the West, ah, Islam is just this pure worship of Allah. You want to worship God, don't you? You want to submit exactly. to God, don't you? But Islam is a package deal. It's not just submitting to God. It's submitting to Muhammad, submitting to Muhammad. Completely and, and yes. fully, not just externally, it says internally, mm -hmm. having no doubts or no uh, disagreements with anything that Muhammad has commanded and decided. That's, that's the Quran, chapter 4, verse 64, 65. You find that in chapter 33, verse 36. And in chapter 9, verse 103, it says that your invocations is a means of security for the believers. Your invocations is a means that guarantees the security of believers, even though he himself was not guaranteed salvation. As we mentioned in a previous program, irony of ironies. The man who says that he doesn't know what Allah will do with him, here we're told that his prayers are a source of security for those who turn to him. Now again, because time is fleeting, mm -hmm. Muslims five times a day in their five daily prayers are speaking to a dead man, a man who's been dead for 1,400 years, Directing part of their prayer, which is worship, mind you. Salah, Salat, is worship. Part of their Salah, their Salat, includes speaking to a man who's been dead for 1,400 years. Now, what am I talking about? This practice is known as Tashahud, when you are testifying. Tashahud. Let me read Sahih Muslim, Book 4, number 798. Sahih Muslim, Book 4, number 798. Pay attention that Muhammad commands them to utter the following words in their five daily prayers. If you don't do this, your prayer is not complete. Ibn Abbas reported, the Messenger of Allah used to teach us tashahud, the testification, shahada. 
just as he used to teach us a surah of the Quran. And he would say, now this is Muhammad telling him how to pray. All services rendered by words, acts of worship, and all good things are due to Allah. Now pay attention to this, David. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings. Peace be upon us and upon Allah's upright servants. I testify there is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And in the narration of Ibn Rub, the words are added as he used to teach us the Quran. Did you catch it? Muhammad is telling them, when you pray five times a day, you say the following. Part of which includes saying to Muhammad, Peace be upon you, O Prophet, no matter where you're at, and despite the fact that he's been dead for 1,400 years, so you you're have not, to say so this. So just to clarify, you're not saying, God, please send peace on Muhammad. No. Right? We would, we would, we would, we would understand, we would understand, like for instance, this is the difference between saying, um, God... Uh, grandma, my grandma died. Please bless her. Yeah, and even me though we saying, don't pray for and, it, yeah, yeah, and me saying in my prayers, Grandma, peace be upon you. Then you're talking not to God about Grandma. You're talking to Grandma, Directly. which presupposes what? That Grandma can hear your prayers. And, and if Muhammad, if you're talking to Muhammad in your Muslim prayers around the world, then Muhammad is what? He has to be omniscient. He's omniscient. He knows all of these prayers. All, and that's an attribute of what? Of a, of a, mere, of a mere human being? No. no. That shows that uh, he must be God. Must be divine. Now, there are many other ways that, that Muslims exactly. deify Muhammad. We've just given a couple, and we've, 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 we've had programs on this before. Uh, but this, this is not how you treat an ordinary human being. You don't pray every day uh, and direct your prayer, at least part of it, to an ordinary human being. You don't submit completely in the exact same way you submit to God to an ordinary human being. And that's just what we find in all, in all the other situations. Uh, yeah, we're kissing the black stone, but it's not idolatry when we do it. Yeah, we bow down to the pagan temple, but it's not paganism when we do it. Uh, yeah, we do all the things to this guy that other religions do and we call idolatry. Um, but we're not being idolaters when we do it. It's okay for us to talk directly to Muhammad, who's merely a human being, in our prayers. Uh, wow, this is, some, this is some wild, wild stuff.